Well, here we are again. Barker Jim here. Um, thought I'd just do a little update on the uh, T dub, as they say in America. I call it too white. Um, anyways, yeah. So here we are. Um, I'm currently sort of ripping it apart as such. Um, I was looking round it the other day, and I noticed my carburetor. It's got an air box attached. Um, on the old bike I had like an air filter on it, not an air box, air box makes it that little bit more fuel economy and all that crap. Um, but I came across it and this was the pipe and as you can see it's pretty fucked and old. I mean this bike is 17 years old so I can imagine rubber does they're fucking wrong anyway. Um, so yeah, I've taken all that out and what a bitch it was. So I had to take the seat and then I had to take all the boxing and all that just to get to it. I mean, there was probably an easier way, like removing the rear wheel, dropping the swing arm off and then getting it off that way. But oh, not again. So yeah, um, currently there's nothing. Normally there's nothing here anyway. Normally the seat just mounts onto there, but that's like long gone that fucking long gone um so yeah now i've got to find a way to put some sort of mud guard in place for the battery maybe a battery holder i haven't quite worked it out yet but that's what sundays are for i guess today is sunday easter sunday and here i am working on the bike to be fair i, I don't i like it this way hmm. anyways yeah let me just have a tinker then so this is where we are now. I've taken all the plastics off. Oh, that's sorry if it's too windy. Chuck that in. Eh, there we go. So I took all the plastics off. I've had a look at it. Um, I've removed the battery. I've taken off the rear light and number plate holder. I'm gonna make a proper bracket for that. So I did a temporary bracket, which means I did a really shit job on it. Um, <laughs> um, and. Going to back to when I had a YBR. Oh, kitty. No. 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 What the fuck's he doing? Flat. Sorry to guard the shit hole. Anyway. So on the YBR, like, we had this and it was all one solid piece of metal and it came out to about here as, as the same size. And what I did with that, I got to grind it all off. With the T-dub, or the twat, as we called it. Um, it actually had, this is all a fixture. So all this part will actually come off, leaving me with just this, meaning I could use a, well, make a bracket for this. But one thinking is, do I get a piece of metal, like a sheet piece of metal, just to go all the way down, somehow get all this to fit, it's going to be a right tricky fucker. Anyway, and get all of it to slide in, then pot rivet it all into place, have all the wires on the inside rather than having them on the outside, I'll make it so that a little bit better, what I need to be doing. Anyway, um, and then hopefully I can make some sort of bag or something for this. I say bag, that sounds like a Tesco bag. No, like do a, somehow do a proper job on it. And then shift the battery up to here so we can sit in here. Seat can sit on top of there. Put a bracket across there for the battery. And then that should be sound. Hmm. I cannot wear everyone. <laughs> it's still what the fuck's that? Anyway, while I'm here actually, ugh. You'll notice, most 125s have this. If, you take, if you've ever had it this far apart, doubt. If you have, fair play to you. If not, feel free to give it a go. <laughs> um, you've got this, let's see if I can get to it. That runs down the arm, right? well, this metal rod here, that actually does your um, switch here. I'm thinking of bypassing. If you know anything, you don't need to know much about electrics at the end of the day. All you need to know is one's life, one's, I think one's positive, one's negative. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it runs down here. But if you were to bypass this wire, so you could clip it, put two attachments on it, run the switch to somewhere else. Like if I was to put a switch on the side of here or here, so it's hidden out the way, then you could have an extra kill switch just in case someone was to try and steal your bike and then put it into gear. I made a video of this last time, but by the time I went to do it, by the time the uh, switch actually came, um, it was over anyway, because I didn't have the YBR anymore. So, um, yeah, that's fun. 
Right, I want to crack on. One sec. Going for a uh, gym's top tip. When it comes to removing something which has been on since the back has been built. WD-40 the fuckers. I've literally snapped. One, two, three bolts out of four. That's the only way it didn't. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyways, back to work. Here we go again. I'm always sniffing my videos. It's terrible. Right, we're in my little shed. It's a tiny little thing, but kind of got a workbench going on. Right, so this is why we've got the rear swing arm. When I was taking all apart in that, if you can see, you can see the back end of it. Wait, I'll show you. What I've done is taking all the plastics off, taking this metal part off around here, then I've popped a metal plate on the bottom, like so. Use another spray, um, and then a lacquer on top of that to protect it. So that's coming along nicely. It looks quite small, it's on. Um, when it comes to mounting the seat, what I've done, I've got these longer bolts. These are just holding it in place while it dries for now. And then when I put the seat back on, I'll use them bolts to actually tighten it all up. Um, so that's what we've got going on there. Um, so what I've done, I've pot riveted this part and this part. That's got a bolt going through there. So, but I needed to take the rear swing off to drill into that part there. So I thought to myself, well, while I'm here, I'll give it a good old look over. You see all of the grease and dirt and it's fucking horrendous. Uh, look at that, that's a good one. There we go. Anyway, so what I am doing, I've taken it all off. There's that part. Um, I'm taking it all off and apart. I'm going to sand. Oh, you can see, I mean, I've seen pictures of ones which are uh, much older than this in better condition. And you can see it's all sort of corroded and wrecked, really. Um, so what I'm going to do, I mean, the thing itself is still quite solid. There's no holes, there's no... There's rust, but it's just because it's got past the paint. So, I mean, if you look at the outside, yeah, it's fucking a bit battered, like, but you wouldn't think it'd be half as bad here than what it actually is. So it's lucky I'm actually taking this off, and I mean, that's, that's quite bad. I've already given that a scrape. So that's where I am at the minute. I'll give this a spray, and we'll see from where we're at there. Right, this is currently where we're at rain fucking marvelous anyway so what i have done is put the metal plate on the bottom sprayed it black made a mount for the light pot riveted it in um extended the power cables so that it would reach the battery back here obviously that's all siliconed up as well so that should hold that all in place as well as being pot riveted into the frame all of this, I've sort of bodged it for now. Um, I need to put a metal plate or something underneath here. Um, I'll get around to that when I do. Um, everything else is looking good. Uh, obviously, rear swing has been taken off. Exhaust has also been taken off. I'm gonna give that a sort of a revamp because it was, wasn't was sitting properly on it. Um, and we'll go over to yonder, oh, before we do. Um, with the seat, because I've moved the battery, part of the seat would always sit in here to hold the fitment. It's normally, it's got this on there anyway, so it should be fine. Plus I've kept the side bits on, so I've had to chop some of the plastic out here so that it fits into there. Um, yeah, tools. <laughs> and then we go into the shed in which we have, oh, it's really raining now. Well, um, and then we've got the rear swing. Um, currently, well, it's actually dry actually. Um, what I've done with that is like you saw it before. I mean, I think I've done an alright job to be honest, from what I had. It was pretty uh, bulked. But yeah, so with that, I've just got normal, literally, I've just got this. I think I picked it up from the range. Um, it's a UK brand, I don't know if they've got it anywhere else. But yeah, got it from there. Um, sounds it all down with that then used a, a detailed sort of sandal one of these little ones really got into the grooves in that give it a good clean down as well before doing all that wiped it all down after that 
Um, this says that it's a glossy non-scratch. It costs me like a fiver. You can get better stuff. So if you go to the local parties or something, you can get really good stuff, but it's what you want to pay. I just see it as a rear swing and I could eventually buy another one if I could be asked, but I'll leave that for now. Um, and that's currently where we're at. Uh, the exhaust is hiding. Here that is. It's just a slip-on end can me job. Um, so that, I've tightened all that back up. I've just got to fill all this back in again um, and then slide it back on. But yep, that's all my exhaust is, just a straight through piece of crap. I think it's looking quite smart uh, from where we're at. Um, once that's all back together and on, I reckon it will look really good. Right, let's see where we get to next. So here is my end can. Um, what I've done is this had like a chromey sort of finish to it. It wasn't amazing. Oh, did that. There we go. Um, it wasn't amazing. Um, it had rust on it. It didn't look great. Same again. Got the uh, sandpaper out. Grab my sand off. Give it all sand down. Got some um, sort of a high temperature paint, which comes out like a matte sort of colour. Um, that's sort of packaging. I got this from eBay like last year or so when I was working with the YBR. Anyway, this is what I use for the pit bike exhaust. Black look, black it looks really good. Um, anyway, so this is what I'm dealing with now. It's all dried. It's all looking good to a degree. I've got like a gap around here. Um, so my plan of action is basically this is exhaust paste. Obviously, I've used it before. Try not to get it on your hands because it doesn't come off great. And all I'm going to be doing with this, whether this is the right way or not, I don't know. But the way I do it is I just put it around the rim and push what I can down. Normally you detach it all and all that, but I ain't feeling that, to be honest. And the good stuff with this is it will turn, it will go rock solid. Um, so if you wanted to, you could paint this as well, because um, it does stay a sort of a... It's like a concrete eventually, so it warms up really. So it takes a while to warm up, but the way I find some people sort of do it, and then they, like even with cars, what they do, they put it on the exhaust, start running the car. And um, the way I see, I can imagine that being an issue is the fact of because you're pushing air through it, it might actually blow quite a bit of it out, so it might go on the floor, it might go in your driveway, or whatever, um, which is never good because on a hot day it goes like concrete like I said so what I'm doing here is I'm just put it all around the rim like that fill every gap I can get to clean most of it off of here I'm going to use a damp rag or something I've got this which I'll put around all the way around the edge and outside of it and like I said just before rather than um, sort of using your car or motorbike to Harden the concrete that I've got, I've just got a little blowtorch. Being q cost a couple of quid, I can't remember. Got it ages ago once again. There we go. What you do is you literally just need to warm it up all the way around, it's not too close. And then once you've done that, you should be all good. You'll know that it'll start hardening, it might change colour, it might be a different product you bought. Set, but yeah, right. I'll carry on with this and I'll catch back up with you in a set.